Good evening everyone and welcome back to the classroom with Architect Mark and today we're going to be talking about the rest of the large toolbar set which is practically everything you need actually in terms of modeling within SketchUp. Uh, so uh, let's not make this long and let's go on over to the classroom. We have our timer on the ready. Let's and the microphone is properly set right now. This should be always. So the timer begins and let's go. So let's just pull this out once more so we can see it properly. And we're starting out with a 500, uh, our trusty 500 unit queue. But uh, on this, on SketchUp, you actually need to identify uh, what type of scale that you want to be working on. So the units need to be identified first. This one is using millimeters, so this is uh, around yeah feet and eight inches, five hundred millimeters. So now that we have our mouse uh, working again, I can show you in better detail how we navigate through the space. So middle mouse button allows us to uh, orbit around, which is always gravity assisted. And when you press control, as you could, uh, well, it, let's just Let's try and show a little bit more of this. All right, I don't know why that is obscured prior, but now we repaired it. Okay, so uh, middle mouse button orbits, and you can see here below when you're orbiting, it says if you shift, if you hold shift, you are able to pan, and if you hold control, you suspend gravity for the meantime. So what does that mean? When you shift, it becomes a hand and pan is activated. Now, when you release shift, it becomes orbit once again. When you hold control down, your movement, the movement of orbit becomes a little wonky. That's because gravity is off, so you're not tethered to the ground you can actually orbit around and turn the camera over you can't normally do this when gravity is returned you can see that uh, it's a very controlled motion and that's the all the motion that you really need. so let's go back to a default starting position where we can see the ground uh, here on SketchUp, you can actually see the ground and the sky being separated by a horizon line where all the perspectives are terminated. So this is a really, uh, a really nice way of uh, teaching and learning about how perspective works. But anyway, we're on this part of the toolbar already so we have move which is basically a translation now this cube is already a group cube so it started out as a normal uh, plane that we push pulled and then group together grouping in SketchUp is one of the most fundamental processes and we'll revisit that eventually. Uh, for now, uh, we have move and then we can press control to create a copy and then shift allows us to lock inference, alt allows us to change whether autofold is on or not what autofold means 
for us right now is I will have to check out what this actually does. But anyway, the more important ones are control. So when you are translating, you can press control once and that activates a plus sign. You can see it on the screen here. So the uh, arrow, what do you call this? The, the arrow cursor gets a plus sign and that means you're copying a you're moving a copy of your original object and leaving the original object in its place if you don't want to do that just release control so it's a lock it's not supposed to it doesn't need to be held down okay so and then shift allows us to move over great spans without having to worry about uh, going off axis so if you when you see a it becomes uh, the same color as the origin lines so this is x translation and if you hold shift, it becomes a bold line. That means whether or not you move the mouse away, uh, it's already locked to the orthographic position, the, the motion of the movement. And when you release it, you can move it around uh, even more. Now, uh, we have the push pull which is basically the it's the feature that made the sketchup uh, that allowed sketchup to turn over the modeling industry on it, onto its uh, concept so push pull can be invoked by p move M forgot to say about that earlier. So P allows us to push pull. And then you can see here that when you press control you can also create a new starting phase where you end the comment. So push pull normal like that. And then push pull with control. That means inside of there inside of the uh, rectangle there is already a face there so you can see it by let's remove the interstitial uh, box and then that reveals that we indeed have left a face on on the inside of that big rectangle prism earlier Next, we have rotation. Uh, this is can be invoked by Q. And rotation allows us to, using a visual protractor, uh, move or rotate an object along an axis. And if you wanted to rotate it another way, so you can see that this is dynamic, it adapts to the face. But if you wanted to maintain that face, for example, you're moving this in relation to this, but you don't want the uh, dynamic protractor to be moving around, you can actually uh, identify what face that you want it to be in and then as it said here, you can also shift to lock the inference. So this is a locked inference. So it's now, uh, what's this, pink. And then you're able to uh, lay it out like that. Okay, snaps within uh, SketchUp are almost always expected to be present. 
Then we have a follow me uh, tool, which is kind of like sweep. So let's try it here. Let's create a circle this way. Uh, and then we'll uh, move it all around the top over there using this tool. So I want this to follow all throughout the object. Then there we go. It's a, that's a pretty easy way of actually filleting the 3D face. And you can do that with uh, any type of shape. For example, if you wanted to create something like that, and then Oh, did I not? Okay, I thought I was drawing on the on the face over there. So it turns out I have been doing that. Let's try that again. Why is that? I want to draw here. There we go. So that's the proper drawing. Then let's just remove this. And then invoke the follow me. It doesn't want to work now. because there's no line. Let's try this. Okay. So that's one of the methods. You choose the uh, reference first and then you choose the shape that will follow that, uh, that line. Okay, so we'll just finish this section here with scale which is basically allows us to, with handles, uh, just the size of an object. And we have offset, which allows us to create lines within uh, constructed polygons already. And with lines like that, you can also do the push and pull once more. And then create really interesting uh, output with that. So as you can see, within SketchUp, it's really easy to create all sorts of shapes that you might think of. Okay, so let's stop there for now and move on to these other measurements and annotation devices here on our next classroom. See you guys tomorrow. Take care.